Hey guys, it's Angie Atkinson with QueenBeing.com. Today we're going to discuss 10 things your narcissist wishes I would not tell you about his or her psychology. Let's get started. So I'm going to begin today with a quote from Jeffrey Kluger, one of my go-to guys when it comes to narcissism and the study of it. Um, and he says, narcissism falls along the axis of what psychologists call personality disorders. This is one of a group that includes antisocial, dependent, histrionic, avoidant, and borderline personalities. But by most measures, narcissism is one of the worst, if only because the narcissists themselves are so clueless. Yeah. All right. So... A report in Cosmopolitan magazine uh, that I picked up a while back um, actually offers some really insightful points into the psyche of your av everyday average narcissist. And if you keep these in mind when you're dealing with one, you know, you're going to find yourself feeling much more in control of the situation. So what we're going to do today is kind of go over a few of those. Before we do, though, um, if you need help dealing with your narcissist, there are a few options for you. Um, you can visit queenbeing.com or you can um, visit booksangiewrote.com and pick up one of my books such as uh, Take Back Your Life, 103 Highly Effective Strategies to Snuff Out a Narcissist Gaslighting and Enjoy the Happy Life You Really Deserve. Yeah, that's a long title, but it's pointed. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, but let's go ahead and move on. Oh, one more thing. You can also visit NarcissismSupportCoach.com if you want to have one-on-one -on -one coaching with me or if you'd like to just pick up my free five-day email course that I designed specifically for narcissistic abuse survivors. Okay, so let's move on. So Cosmos Insights um, in, their, in their article were quite uh, telling, I thought, and in brief, they, they are as follows. Um, so Number one, you can't shame a narcissist. They will make your life much harder if you do. It's true, and you know it. Uh, number two, the reason they're so fragile and insecure on the inside and mean and hateful on the outside goes all the way back to childhood. Though researchers believe that there might be a genetic component, the truth is that the way a child is raised has a great deal to do with how they turn out, as we all probably already know. All right, number three. Oh, before we get to number three, let me just say this, also of note. There are two ways to create a narcissist. Uh, first, by denying a child unconditional love so they never feel comfortable in emotional love, or to totally go the opposite direction and overindulge to, toward overindulging them, praising, and under-disciplining a child, uh, making them believe they're overly special. So this would be indicate that the term happy medium could apply to good parenting, my note, of course. Number three. Kids who got big responsibilities at early ages are more often narcissists than those who didn't. Isn't that interesting? Whether it was direct responsibility, such as for a sibling, or indirect, such as for the emotional health of a parent. Now, this leads to their adult selves always seeking approval and trying too hard, yet never allowing themselves to, to just be, and rather requiring to be the center of attention. I find that very fascinating as well. Uh, number four, a narcissist desperately needs to feel superior to everyone around him because inside they just don't feel like they're good enough and they react with contempt to anyone who seems to have anything they lack. Not good. Number five, narcissists think big. That is, they're grandiose thinkers because they feel like it fills some hole inside themselves. Yeah. Number six, they have a huge sense of entitlement. They think they deserve to have what they want without regard for the needs and desires of those around them. Yeah, number seven, they haven't met a boundary they haven't crossed, and if you don't put a stop to it when it begins, they'll keep crossing every boundary you've got. Yep. Number eight, if you must confront a narcissist, you need to do it carefully. Uh, they respond best to what's called emphatic validation, according to Cosmo. Now, you should always affirm the relationship first before you share anything that doesn't feel right, according to a psychologist the magazine interviewed. So, for example, if it's someone you're dating, you might say to them, I care about you a lot, so when you don't listen to what I'm saying, I feel like I'm nothing in your eyes, instead of, why don't you listen to me? You understand? All right. So if you need help with feeling powerful when you're dealing with an extremely powerful an extremely toxic narcissist, I'd like to invite you to check out my book, Take Back Your Power, um, 
and you can find that. Uh, the, the subtitle of that is How to End People Pleasing, Stop Letting Life Happen to You, and Start Getting What You Want. That is also at booksangiewrote.com, and you'll see it with a little Wonder Woman on the cover. Okay? Um, so, number nine. The only thing that might motivate a narcissist to change is having meaningful consequences for their bad behavior. For example, a healthy narcissist might avoid cheating on a spouse in order to preserve the relationship because if the consequences are high enough, they might start to reevaluate their actions. And number 10, no matter how intelligent and together a narcissist seems in other ways, they are emotional toddlers. Cosmos experts both noted that the way to deal with a narcissist who is raging is to consider them like you would a two-year-old who is throwing a tantrum and that most of that is just their way of putting on a show you know so they they have a uh, what is it a, you know more bark than bite so to speak most of them not all of them both agree that as long as you're not in physical danger you have to pick your battles and decide what you will and won't tolerate and then make your choices accordingly I find that very interesting as well all right so anyway like I said I totally find this stuff incredibly insightful and on target. I'd like to know your thoughts on this. Um, and by the way, if you're interested, I've also got a couple of other books on the topic, including one called Your Love is My Drug, How to Shut Down a Narcissist, Detoxify Your Relationships, and Live the Awesome Life You Really Deserve, starting right now. All right? So uh, until next time, my name is Angie Atkinson. I'm a certified life coach, an author, and a survivor. Check out uh, queenbeing.com, NarcissismSupportCoach.com, and BooksAngieWrote.com. Uh, and, and find out uh, anything you're interested in or need to know about narcissism. Um, if you want personal coaching, go ahead and hit NarcissismSupportCoach.com or just email my assistant, Haley, at O-F-C-M-G-R-H-A-L-E-Y, BlissFireMedia, at gmail.com. All right, or just reach out to me and I'll, I'll forward your email to her. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see you soon.